Recently, I was in Hangzhou, China, and I was shocked to see the number of people in the lake in Hangzhou with selfie sticks. I think it won't be long before we have ubiquitous cameras everywhere. And that if I wanted to request to an organization, give me my last 24 hours on film. They'll just say, pay $60, pay five bucks, we'll give it to you. The light camera in the street on the main road, the light camera in the school, the embedded sensor in the shop, the one that you didn't even know was covertly hidden behind here, will give you a replay of your life. We're not far away from that. There are theme parks that are doing that. You pay your money, you enjoy your day with your family, and at the end they offer you the ability to purchase your day on CD or USB or download from the web. My research is showing me that the technological trajectory is headed to a time that we will constantly be online, constantly be always connected. We will have to pay to be disconnected. To live off the grid will be a luxury. To have some time out permanently from that mobile phone reaching you will be costing you money. The camera may well be sitting in your clothing, may well be sitting in your glasses may well be your 24 times 7 alibi. But there is something wrong with this form of surveillance because in essence, it is surveillance. It's the fact that we can't be ourselves. We're constantly playing to a theatre. We're constantly second-guessing. Now what? Is that the best view? And you often see this when police officers, for example, have a dangerous criminal on a high-profile case and as they're walking between the car, the paddy wagon, and the courtroom, the criminal has the jacket over their heads and the police officer will do it as they're walking into the court. The police officer I've studied is in a scene of a crime. And instead of worrying about what's going on, they take the picture out to press the camera button to take a picture. This happened in Bondi where a New South Wales police officer took a photo of a guy yielding a machete so he could upload it to Instagram. What are you doing? You're a law enforcement officer. You should be worried about the guy with the machete, not showing your friends how cool you are. You're in a high-profile case. This happens in the defence forces. And what do we have? Is secret information leaking out? Because people disclose their location coordinates with the pic. How dumb is that? Telling the enemy where you are? So there are no boundaries. This is the problem with social media. You know, people are on social media when they're in bed having sexual intercourse. I'm having sexual intercourse. Why are you telling the whole world? Do it in your private space. What's that going to gain you? Nothing. So we're obsessed about reporting. What's your status? What are you doing? Well, I'm living. I'm breathing. That should be the response. I'm trying to be a good person. I'm trying to feed my kids. I'm trying to be useful in society. I'm trying to trust, I'm trying to share, I'm trying to imbue something in another, I'm trying to learn, I'm trying to be functional, I'm trying my best. But in that, instead, we're reporting about the intimate things that shouldn't be reported on. Or we're reporting about the fake things that we're doing, that we're not doing. We're lying through our teeth, saying we're engaged in activity X, Y and Z when we're not. And we're being a bad example to our children because the children think this is so normal that they will uptake the same behaviour.